with this presentation, try to give you a, a, a good background uh, of the history of the Vietnam War. And again, you can find all kinds of information. I think if you go to the YouTube, you can find documentaries, hundreds and hundreds of documentaries on the Vietnam War. I think one of them that's probably most accurate is uh, go to the Cold War videos. There's a series of Cold War videos, and one of 11 out of the 24, number 11 out of 24 is on Vietnam War, 1954 to 1968. You might find that most useful. But with this, I'm going to try to explain how the United States got into the Vietnam War and the disaster that followed. As you can see on the map, Vietnam is uh, Southeast, Southeast Asia. It used to be called Chochin, China. It was divided into three parts, North Vietnam, and two parts now, but to North Vietnam and South Vietnam. And a long, narrow strip down the east coast of Indo Indochina. Next to Cambodia and up in the top you'll see Laos. And if you keep this in your mind, you'll see right inside of the Cambodian border there's a line where it says the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It becomes uh, a great place of contention later in the war. France versus Vietnam. The French colonialized colonized uh, Vietnam in the 1830s, I think, something like that. And the French were known as one of the most brutal colonial powers, not only in, in uh, Vietnam, but you can read the stories about the French colonies in, the, in, in Africa. You can read about the Belgian Congo colonies uh, they were, the Vietnamese had a saying that for every rubber tree, which was what they were trying to exploit most, there was a dead Vietnamese person. It was, it was brutal. During the Second World War, the French capitulated and were under the control of the Japanese, and in Europe they were under control of the Germans. Capitulate means to give up without much of a fight. The French just uh, collapsed. The Japanese ruled Vietnam during the war with the cooperation of the French. The 1954, well, in 1945, um, Ho Chi Minh declared the Republic of Vietnam the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, asked for American help in getting rid of the J J Japanese and the French, prevent the French from coming back, but because of many, it's, it's a long, long story of the interest of the beginning of the Cold War in 1945, 46, 47, the French insisting on maintaining or regaining their colonial empire, the Americans being very preoccupied in other places, and the beginning of the, the war with the French, the North Vietnamese under Ho Chi Minh, General Nguyen Giap, who just died last week. Uh, finally, in July of 1954, the the French trying to draw the North Vietnamese into battle in the mountains of the uh, of, of western northwestern Vietnam at a place called Dien Bien Phu, and you can find out information on that on your YouTube also. Uh, the French were surrounded by the Vietnamese. They never thought that the Vietnamese could get enough uh, artillery and everything dragged up through the jungles, but they did. The French were humiliated and re-surrendered and withdrew from Vietnam. 
the Americans, along with the French, promised that there would be an election by 1956. But by this time, because of the uh, Cold War atmosphere, which we've talked about in other places, the Americans were not going to allow an, an election in Vietnam because they knew that Ho Chi Minh would win and the Americans were supporting the uh, New Diem in the south, in Saigon. So the elections were blocked in the north. The, the Ho Chi Minh was supported by the Soviet Union and China, uh, which is true. And the Americans were not going to let another communist country be created in, in Southeast Asia. The Americans supported New Den Diem, who was a anti-communist figure that they kind of put in there and, and supported him. The theory was, and you've probably heard this theory before, and Johnson said it, if, if South Vietnam falls to the communists in Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Burma, India, and eventually we'll be fighting the communists on the streets of San Francisco, the domino theory. If you let one fall, and also the theory of containment, the policy of containment. South Vietnam under Diem, it was a military dictatorship. The CIA set up ways of uh, arresting people and making people disappear. Anybody who resisted or opposed the DM government, the communists were doing the same thing in the north, but that doesn't come out so much. Uh, communists could be put in jail in the south without any charges or anything. Some people just simply disappeared. But this, in the in the south in the north, there was no opposition because it simply wasn't permitted. In the south, that was permitted, and you can see the picture on the lower left: Buddhist monks and nuns protesting against the repressive, oppressive government of Diem and his brother. Uh, the monks, uh, several scenes in the early 1960s of monks actually setting themselves on fire to protest the government. In the north, the communists supported the creation of the what they call the National Liberation Front. These were people brought together under I anybody to to throw out Diem and the corrupt government of Diem, the American-supported government of Diem. The NLF becomes the Viet Cong later. There were Americans in South Vietnam in the late 50s and early, early, early 70s during Kennedy administration. And one of the policies was, there's called the Strategic Hamlet Program. The Americans, and I'll repeat this many times during this little lecture, the Americans never took the time or the effort to understand the Vietnamese culture. It's an ancient culture. Uh, they were not modern-minded people. They were very much, as any agricultural people are, tied to the land. Every, every little village had its land, and it was the ancestors were buried there. Uh, the Americans didn't, didn't understand that, and they tried to round up the people from the villages and put them in little secure, what they call hamlets, small villages surrounded by barbed wire to keep out the communists at night. The people, they, they had to go along with it, but they, it didn't endear the Americans to the Vietnamese. Uh, here's the self-immolations, the pictures of monks in flames protesting the government. What they did was they had very elderly monks who would, uh, how would you say, drug, be, be drugged. Uh, they realized they were very old and very sick, and they would sacrifice themselves to protest against the Vietnamese, South Vietnamese government. By 19, early 1963, the DM has many problems. Kennedy is getting fed up with them. Uh, the generals ask the U.S. for approval. The United States approves the overthrow of the government. Uh, 
and the exile of Diem and his brother. But in September, they, the, uh, in November, they, the South Vietnamese military overthrow Diem, capture the brother and him and his brother, and murdered both of them. And then just a couple weeks later, Kennedy was assassinated. Things changed. Lyndon Johnson becomes president. When Johnson became president, there were 16,000 American military advisors in Vietnam, but there were no combat troops. That wasn't until 1965. Uh, this is the beginning of uh, Johnson's insecurities. And, and Johnson just didn't know quite what to do, and he was being advised by the military to put in more troops, you've got to stop communist aggression, you've got to stop the communists where they are, you've got to contain communism in Vietnam and North Vietnam, you can't let them take over in South Vietnam. And in 1964, in the summer of 1964, there was what's called the Gulf of Tonkin incident, where if you, we'll look at the map here, if you look up in the Oh, to the southeast of Hanoi, you'll see the Gulf of Tonkin next to the island of Hainan, Chinese island. And some American ships were in, in that area. The Turner, two, two American destroyers, the Turner Joy, I can't think of the name of the other one. But at any rate, they claimed that they had been attacked by North Vietnamese uh, patrol boats, it's never been, uh, the evidence is not there. It's almost like the Americans invented this uh, attack on their ships as a justification for the Delf Gulf of Tonkin resolution. The president went to Congress, the USS Maddox and the Turner Joy, that's what the two ships were. The resolution used to obtain congressional approval for increased pre so the president could just send troops without constantly asking for approval of the Congress. This was later changed because of the increasing power of the presidency in the United States. They take great, most of the time, great care about balance of power. The Congress being the number one government institution, not the presidency. So Johnson has an excuse to send more troops to Vietnam. By 1965, he starts sending in combat troops. And Operation Rolling Thunder refers to bombing of North Vietnam targets, North Vietnamese targets. And the United States was bombing North Vietnam for years. Dropped more bombs on North Vietnam than all the bombs dropped by everybody during the Second World War. And it destroyed North Vietnam, but it did not destroy the resolution of the North Vietnamese, and the South Vietnamese too, to win a, a war of liberation. This is another thing that the Americans thought they were fighting a war against communism, where in fact the Vietnamese didn't look at it that way. To them it was, to liberate themselves from occupation by foreign powers, whether it was the French or the Chinese, or the, the Chinese were no friends of the Vietnamese either. North Vietnamese tactics, it was jungle warfare. Um, they, they rarely stood up and fought uh, like regular army battles. There's a very good movie, it's, it's, um, uh, we were soldiers once and young, and it's about the Battle of the Ear Drang Valley in 1965, I think, where the North Vietnamese regular army, the where it says the NLF, the National Liberation Front, uh, actually fought against regular U.S. Army troops. The fighting in Vietnam was a very difficult thing. You never really knew who the enemy were could be a little 10-year-old kid standing there with a hand grenade in his Coke can. You, you, you never knew. In the United States by 1966, 1967, well, we had a lottery. 
a, a draft. So if you were 18 years old, and, and you still do, you have to, when you're an American citizen, you're 18 years old, by law you must register for the draft. You could do it on the online on the uh, U.S. Embassy or U.S. Embassy webpage. You can find a link probably. Uh, so that every year, in January of every year, they would have uh, pulled, pulled the numbers out of who was going to be drafted into the U.S. Army. By 1966, the protest against the war began to increase. Uh, by 1968, the year 1968 was a disastrous year for the United States. In January of 68, the North Vietnamese attacked throughout South Vietnam. They lost, but they showed the American public that the war was not over. And you also have to remember that uh, the, the Vietnam War was the first televised war. So every evening on, on evening news in the United States, they would come on and say, here's the, the body count, how many Vietnamese died, how many North um, Americans died. Um, and the people were seeing the young American boys being brought back in body bags covered with the American flag. And this was, 19, you got to remember, 1965, 1966, 1967, 1968, and the Vietnamese are still extremely strong. They couldn't win. The Vietnamese never really won a, a, a battle, but they could be constantly harassing uh, at nighttime, firing rockets into the air bases. They could get, they could get close enough, and Saigon was a, a, a terribly dangerous place. Uh, in in March of 1968, there was a, a massacre. American troops went into a small village called Milai and killed some 400 people, old, old men, women, and children. It didn't come out until a year or so later. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't publicized, but... Uh, the American people were, were fed up with it. Richard Nixon wins the presidency in the, in the winter, uh, fall of 1968 with the promise that he will get the United States out of Vietnam with honor. I still wonder what he meant by that. There was no honor. Of course, with Richard Nixon, there was no honor either. Uh, he had a secret plan to end the war, and his plan was also Vietnamization. American troops would pull out, and the Vietnamese troops would fight for their own country. Well, that didn't work either because Vietnamese troops were not particularly reliable. They weren't reliable at all. Why did the United States lose the Vietnam War? Technically speaking, they didn't. They didn't lose it, but they couldn't win it. It was a war of liberation. And like I said before, they never took the time to understand the Vietnamese culture and history. This is one of the infamous photographs um, that came out during the war. There's another one of a little girl with all her clothes burned off running down the street. She now lives in Canada, uh, has finished college and everything. But this particular photo looks gruesome. You can actually see the bullet coming out the other side of his head. But this guy, uh, this is the police chief in Saigon, uh, executing a, a Viet Cong terrorist in downtown Saigon after he'd just killed some people up the street. Despite dropping more tons of bombs on Vietnam in all World War II, and you can see where the Ho Chi Minh Trail comes down outside of Vietnam, so the Americans also bombed the Ho, Ho Chi Minh Trail and this one is about the body count. The North Vietnamese, it was a people's liberation war. And there's the American generals. Congratulations on your confirmed body count. So the Americans were counting bodies, but that didn't matter. The Vietnamese were willing to lose millions, and they, and they did, as long as they got independence. By 1968, the peace movement by 1969, 1970, students closing down colleges and universities. Uh, 
uh, marching in the streets, massive marches in Washington, New York, all the big cities uh, against the war, Nixon trying to end the war. I put this in here, the United States never understood Vietnamese culture. Wherever the American military goes, they take their culture with them of um, Coca-Cola and rum and coke and Budweiser and got to be have their television with them and all the comforts of home. You see things on TV these days, uh, the troops in Afghanistan or no more in Iraq, but around the world that they have instant access, particularly with the communications technology today. And finally, the United States was not prepared to keep losing high numbers of casualties in a jungle war. The United States was trained, military is trained for a conventional war like against the Russians in Europe, but not like in Vietnam. Vietnam was a tragedy in American history, and Vietnam has overshadowed military decisions ever since. Uh, military decisions about war in, in 1980s, about the El Salvador, uh, other Central America, Nicaragua, we don't want another Vietnam, we don't want to fight other people's wars for them, let them fight for themselves. And the memory of Vietnam is definitely still with us. If you ever go to Washington, D.C., right next to the Viet, uh, Lincoln Memorial, you will find a, a very sad memorial for Vietnam with the names of all the young men and women who died in Vietnam.